Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. Hope you're doing good, hope you're doing well. Guess what guys, I never thought the day would come, but it's finally here. The Algeria squad to face Niger in the AFCON 2023 qualifiers. Home and away has finally been released, what, just six days before the game, uh, and we've, we've dropped the squad. I think we're literally the last team in international football to do so. But it's a bit understandable in this situation because... You know, there's a lot of players that are dual nationality that you have to go through a process. And some for some of them, it was quite a late process of changing sporting nationality. And all that paperwork's got to be finalised. So they probably wanted to see exactly who was going to be ready uh, in time. We're going to be looking at this squad today. So um, drop a like on the video if you're going to enjoy this video. I hope you will. You're going to stick around because it might be a little bit longer than usual because there's lots uh, to discuss. So... We're going to start off with the goalkeeping position. Now, usually on this channel throughout the years, this has been the easiest position to talk about because it's literally just been, you know, rice and bolhi, rice and bolhi, rice and bolhi. Rice and bolhi, and we alluded to this a couple of days ago, has not been selected in this squad. Once again, he's now playing in the Saudi second division, which would mean that the level he's playing at, I mean, it's not even Saudi first division. He doesn't even get to play against, like, you know, Ronaldo and Al Nasser and Al Hilal. So that's a bit of an insult to Mbolhi, really, even at his age now. I think he could be more than capable of playing at uh, a Saudi club. And you know, some players play so good for your club when they come to the country, well or nothing. Rice and Bolhi is one of the rare opposites. I think he's not that good at club level, but when he comes to international level, he gives his heart. And listen, he may not be in this squad. You know, he's not retired from, uh, from international duty, but he will always have... Um, the safe hands of, of Algeria in his gloves. So honestly, what a legend. And um, I'm sure most people here watching would have grown up with literally just him in goal. So uh, so thank you, Rasen Bulhi. And um, I, I want to see him get to 100 caps though. So maybe he'll, he'll get a few more games one day. The three goalkeepers that are here, Alexander Ukija, um, Zugba and Mandrea. Now obviously Alexis Gendouz off the back of that Chan would have felt that maybe he deserved a spot in the squad at least, not necessarily to be the number one. Um, we've seen Zugba playing goal um, at the last international sort of round of fixtures. Alexander Ukija has been playing well, but again, he's not exactly young either. Could Anthony Mandrea make a claim for that number one position? So for the first time in a long time, we're not actually sure who Algeria's number one is going to be. But one thing that's for sure, Belmadi has to make it clear from now to the tournament starting who Algeria's number one goalkeeper is going to be because you cannot go into a tournament, play a keeper the first game and then change in the second game. We saw at the 2010 World Cup, uh, Fauzi Shaoshi played the first game, dropped the ball, Rice and Bully come in for the second game for, for, his, uh, for his debut. So we need to know from before the AFCON in 10 months who the number one's going to be. So I hope he's consistent and plays the same keeper for 90 minutes in both games against Niger. So that's the goalkeepers dealt with into the defence, which is probably the most interesting in terms of new arrivals. In that left-back position, we do have Rami Bensabeni, and we also have Rayan 8 Nori, the Wolves, the Premier League left-back in the Algeria squad for the first time. Signed, sealed and delivered. Welcome to Algeria, Rayan 8 Nori. He is in this squad, highly anticipated, highly rated left-back. I think he'll be at a bigger club than Wolves one day with respect to Wolves. That is fantastic. Bensabeni. Uh, eight Nori, two solid left backs. And also, Jatawan Hadjem is also in the squad. So welcome to Hadjem. He's also a fullback. He's in this squad as well. Again, a player we spoke about before, the Nantes defender. He was at Paris FC at the start of the season, now playing at Liga um, for Nantes FC in, uh, in France. And also, Mehdi Lloris keeps his place in the squad, despite the fact that Sampdoria are rock bottom of Serie A, I think. Um, Mehdi Lloris is, is in the squad. And again, interestingly, Belmadi seemed to be counting him as, as a defender, as a defensive option in this squad. He doesn't really see him as a, as a midfielder or a winger, and that's fair considering the wing options we do have, some of which are not even in this squad, which we'll come on to later on. And Kevin Van Den Kerkhoff is in this squad. The Bastia right-back, who's, I think, French, Algerian and Dutch, hence the name Van Den Kerkhoff, Algerian through his mother's side, and we need right-backs. Mitchell Weiser not had the switch in time in this squad, but Yusuf Atal is currently out injured, hence why he's not in this squad. So the only out and out right back really you could say we have is Van den Kerkhoff. And he and you know, I hope this is not the reason why, but it seems to be 
the fact that his, his surname was an Algerian, he felt under pressure that in the squad listing, he's not been written as Kevin van den Kerkhoff. I think he's been written as Kevin Gitoun or something like that. If that's what he wants to be known as, if it's his mother's surname, like Rice and Bolhi, for example, and Bolhi is not his father's surname, his father's Congolese, um, he's chosen to change it. So we've got four backs wide, wise, uh, Ben Sabaini, Ain't Nori, Hajem, uh, Larice and Van den Kerkhoff and four central defenders, but Delaney is not here. We have got Isamandi. There was a lot of rumours swelling around that Isamandi wouldn't be here because of his lack of playing time. Still only 31, and the age is not that essential for a centre back. You know, defenders can play for a little bit longer, like goalkeeper. So Mandy is in, Tuba is in, he had to be in, Two Guy is in, and also in another player um, we thought might be involved is Zinedine Belaid from the, the Chan squad, the Yusma centre back. So Belaid is involved for the first time in Belmadi squad. So those are sort of the, and probably will be the four centre-backs going forward, unless there's drastic changes, they probably would be the four central defenders you take into an AFCON and maybe play um, Rami Bensabeni there as well. Into the midfield, we've got six central midfield players. Hussam Awar, yes, has picked Algeria, but he made it very clear that he doesn't want to come until September. A, he's not fit enough, and B, he wants to be physically ready to play for African football. So yes, he's an Algerian international now, but he won't be involved, and with respect, we're playing Niger. If it was a World Cup playoff to get to a World Cup, of course Awa would be here, so it's not that important. Yassine Adli, similar reasons, he's going to play for Algeria. Again, he's barely played, was it five, five sub-appearances, I don't know, for AC Milan? You can't pick a player who's played five games off season. It's a bit harsh, so no Adli in the squad either for similar reasons, but your usual suspects are here. Benassa is here, Zarouki is here, and Boudaoui is here. Can Boudaoui finally take some of this good form from Nice, where he's been playing every week? Well, he did pick up a little knock, and Boudaoui wasn't involved in the Conference League. Hopefully he uh, recovers from that knock in time to be involved in this Algerian setup, but it's the usual suspects again, you know, Zorgan, Ben Taleb, and Kadri. I do think Adel Kaha Kadri playing in Belgium is a very good young talent, showed what he could do in a recent international break, and he probably deserves to be playing in at least the Dutch league or the French league in comparison to the Belgian league. So that's as far as the central midfield is concerned. Now, Belmali's gone for sort of two right wing players, two left wing players, and uh, three centre forwards. So Riyad Mahrez, of course, captain, had to be here now. This is interesting. We spoke about Ben Rahma versus Belayli. We had rumours that Belayli was going to be disciplined and um, not called up. He's also been out of form. I cannot believe that Yusuf Belayli has been called up. I'm sorry, that's not good enough for me. That's a, that's a pick I wouldn't have done. Nothing against the guy. I wouldn't have picked Yusuf Belayli in this squad. I don't see, at this point, what he can offer. And side Ben Rahma, this is what makes it worse, side Ben Rahma... He's not in the squad. A Premier League left winger at West Ham United, the mighty massive hammers, can't get in the Algeria squad. What on earth is going on? Something is not right between Belmadi and Ben Rama. There's something not right. A, to persist with Yusuf Belayli, and B, to not pick Ben Rama. I mean, what are we doing? We have not got the divine right to drop Premier League players. Who do we think we are not calling up a Premier League winger who's banging form. That is cocky, that is complacent, that is overconfident. I'm telling you now, the only reason he's not here, and we know Belmadi is strict, we've seen him make players who've dyed their hair blonde change it back when they come and play for Algeria. He's seen him walk into a hotel with Maya Mills and thought, screw that, you do that mate, I'll have serious people. I'm telling you now, that story, and Diggity the rapper, the ex, is 100%, how the hell has Diggity affected the bloody Algerian national team. It's a bloody joke. Do you see this happening anywhere else? You cannot want, if you're going to do that stuff, right, Saeed, or Maya, if you're listening, you do it behind closed doors. You're affecting our bloody AFCON qualification. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't care less about the things and, and your buffets and all this crap, right? Get a room, let us do our qualifiers and leave it be. Now, I've got to watch Belayli again and watch Saeed probably watch it from Premier Inn. In Canary Wharf. It's ridiculous. So, Mares and um, Belayli in the squad. Good news though, the other two wingers are new players. One, Faraz Shaibi from uh, Toulouse. He's involved. Big welcome to him. Looking forward to seeing him. And the big one, I think the big one here, is Badruddin Boatnani, who went from playing in the Mediterranean Games for France in Algeria less than a year ago, is now playing for the Algerian national team. It just shows what a mess you know, admi admin-wise, administration, that he went to play for the French at the Mediterranean game. Should have played for us, first of all, at home. Might have won the bloody thing. 
Um, so Boatanani and Shaibi are huge. Of course, Adam Unes is out. And secondly, on the Bellelli point, Bilal Brahimi, another player in very, very good form for Nice. He's got, I think he's got a league goal of the month. He's not here either. Over, and Bellelli is. I mean, come on, Bilal Brahimi, he, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Uh, mashallah, but he's, he's not in the squad. Um, and of course, three strikers. Very straightforward, isn't it? Andy Delors, always good to see him involved. Islam Slomani getting the winner for Anderlecht in the UEFA Europa Conference League. Away to Villarreal, off the bench, 34. Slomani still here, offering his services alongside Delors. And Mohamed um, Amora completes the Algeria squad. So that's the squad to face Niger. Let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments down below as Algeria look to make it to the Africa Cup of Nations next January. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.